Our job is to use DNA to apply to animal damage management to inform and aid um, the activities of our agency. Genetics plays a pivotal role in our broader understanding of feral swine ecology, feral swine movement, feral swine introduction processes, and we can uniquely use this tool to help inform and guide feral swine control efforts at a very broad continental scale. Genetics are kind of the permanent footprints that, that pigs leave behind them. One thing that genetics can tell us that other tools can't is where a pig came from or differentiating a wild pig from a domestic pig. We are beginning to develop the resolution that we can place that pig back to its point of birth on the landscape and that landscape is the entirety of the invaded range. So we can differentiate a member of the local population versus a pig that has been introduced into that population. So very often we're seeing deliberate efforts by people to augment or reinforce or release additional pigs into established populations is a more rapid effort to grow that local population. And so genetics allows us to differentiate local pigs from what we call exogenous pigs, or pigs that came simply from broader populations. And so as we've begun to quantify the rate at which pigs are introduced, we've shared that back to the states, to our, our partners in state programs. Collecting genetic data is the key to strengthening the laws in Missouri. I'd go down to the state capitol and get asked, where's the evidence that these feral swine are still being moved around the state? That happened years ago, but it's not happening anymore. That's where I could produce the map from the National Wildlife Research Center from the year prior and show them that that movement was still occurring in our state and that we were actually having a lot of introduction pressure from outside of the Missouri genetic group. And what really helped strengthen our story was when we started working with USDA to collect genetic samples from feral hogs that had been killed here in Missouri. Uh, and, and what we were able to show is that we had 14, 15 distinct genetic populations and that a feral hog killed in Benton County, Missouri came from Wayne County, Missouri, and it had genetics from Texas, Florida, Oklahoma. And that really helped tell our story and strengthen why we needed to change Missouri's feral hog laws. After control efforts, it's very hard to tell if we've missed any pigs, right? Those last few are the hardest to find. And so we've developed a tool called, in, based on environmental DNA, so DNA that pigs or other animals shed into the environment through saliva, um, urination, feces, or just sloughing off cells. We are able to go into the environment, simply take water samples into a bottle, add a little bit of buffer, and then that is sent back to the lab. And we do a DNA extraction, so we isolate the DNA from that water. And then we use what's called polymerase chain reaction to see if we amplify the target DNA. And in this case, the target DNA is feral swine, or, or pigs in general. Once we are able to determine if we have any positives, we can go back to the people that are working in the field and say, you know, we, we saw some positives here. We saw three out of the 30 replicates, or we saw 30 out of the 30 replicates. But this is a place that somebody needs to go back and check on. These efforts to remove only a few animals off the landscape, particularly when it's a large geographical area, or an area where there's lots of water and it's difficult to access, such as Lake Havasu National Wildlife Refuge, being able to take water samples rather than send a lot of people out in boats spending hours or reviewing camera data can really lead to um, effective efficiencies in our collaborative efforts. With high resolution genetic data that we're using and the breadth of the genetic archive, which now numbers approximately 20,000 genotypes, we've got a mountain of data to leverage to help enforce the state policies. I certainly think that because we have a suite of tools of which environmental DNA is one, in some areas where we are really targeted to remove pigs, we're going to be able to.